an audio store warning is activated at an appropriate margin from the stall condition and the upper floor protection is inoperative. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Captain SQ where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. A320, normal law, alternate law, direct law and mechanical backup. Airbus laws that keep you safe. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals. This video is merely a guide. Before we start, do destroy the like button, comment and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Alright, let's start with normal law. Normal law is indicated to the pilots by the double green symbols on the PFD. In normal law, regardless of the pilot's input, the computers will prevent excessive maneuvers and exceedances to keep the aircraft within a safe flight envelope. Flight control normal law covers control in three axes. Number one, pitch. Number two, roll. Number three, yaw. Let's look at flight envelope protection, alleviation of maneuver loads in ground mode. Ground mode in a direct relationship between side stick deflection and elevator deflection without the auto trim. Ground mode automatically sets the trimmable horizontal stabilizer or THS at 0 degrees, which is within the green band. A manually adjusted THS settings for takeoff CG has priority. When the aircraft reaches 75 knots during the takeoff roll, the system reduces maximum up elevator deflection from 30 degrees to 20 degrees. Ground mode blends into flight mode during the first 5 seconds after liftoff. Let us look at flight mode. In normal law, the side stick sets the elevator and THS to maintain a load factor proportional to stick deflection as it is independent of speed. With the side stick at neutral and wings level, the system maintains 1G in pitch and there is no need for the pilot to trim if he changes speed or configuration. Pitch trim is automatic. In normal terms, with up to 33 degrees of bang, the pilot does not have to make any pitch correction once the turn is established, nor does he have to introduce yaw. The aircraft does it for you. Automatic pitch trim freezes in the following situations. The pilot enters a manual trim order via the THS. The radio height is below 50 feet or 100 feet with autopilot engaged and the load factor goes below 0.5 G or above 1.25 G. When the angle of attack protection is active, the THS setting is limited. Neither the pilot nor the system can apply additional nose up trim. When high speed or high mark protection is active, THS setting is limited between the setting at the aircraft entry into protection and 11 degrees nose up. When the aircraft exceeds 33 degrees angle of bang, THS is limited between the setting at the aircraft entry into this protection and 3.5 degrees nose down. Control with autopilot engage. The ELAC and SEX limit what the autopilot can order. With the autopilot engaged, the side stick has a restraining force, keeping it in neutral position. If the pilot overcomes this force, the autopilot is disconnected. The pilot can also disconnect the autopilot by pushing on the rudder pedals 10 degrees out of trim or by moving the pitch trim wheel beyond a certain threshold. All protection of normal law remains active except pitch attitude protection. Let us move on to the flare mode and the flare mode is essentially a direct stick to elevator relationship with some damping provided by the load factor and the pitch rate feedbacks. Flight mode changes to flare mode as the aircraft descends below 500 feet radio altimeter height to land. The THS is frozen and the system memorizes the aircraft attitude and it becomes the initial reference for pitch attitude control. As the aircraft descends through 30 feet, the system begins to reduce the pitch attitude to minus 2 degrees nose down over a period of 8 seconds. 
and consequently to flare the aircraft, a gentle nose up action is required. Flare mode transitions to ground mode over the next 5 seconds when pitch attitude is less than 2.5 degrees. Well, let's take a short break and we move on to the alternate law thereafter. Alright, before we dive in into alternate law, I made an error on purpose regarding normal law. Can you figure it out? And if you know the answer, do comment below. Okay, let's dive in. Alternate law. Well, alternate law is like having protected sex. The condom breaks. Now you have to be extra careful as things get a little sensitive. In-flight amber axis replaces the green double bars on the PFD and an ECAM flight control alternate law indicates that the aircraft flight control laws have changed from normal to alternate law. Alternate law can be with or without protections. Let's look into pitch control in flight mode. In flight, the alternate law pitch mode follows a load factor demand law much as the normal law with auto trimming in changes of speed or configuration but it has reduced protections. Caution, uh, there is no pitch attitude protection. And in flare mode, in pitch alternate law, the flight mode changes to the pitch direct law when the pilot selects the landing gear down. The flare mode is a direct stick to elevator relationship with manual trimming by the THS. And let's look at ground mode. Under alternate law, the ground mode becomes active on the ground 5 seconds after touchdown. It is identical to the ground mode of the normal law. It is a direct relationship between side stick deflection and elevator deflection without auto trim. It automatically sets the trimmable horizontal stabilizer or THS at zero degrees, which is inside the green band. Let's have a look at the lateral control. When the aircraft is flying in pitch alternate law, lateral control follows the roll direct law. It is a direct stick to control surface movement relationship using the ailerons and spoilers 4 and 5. Some special knowledge for you guys. Uh, if spoiler number 4 has failed, spoiler number 3 replaces it. And if the ailerons have failed, all spoilers become active for the roll. Roll rate is automatically limited to about 30 degrees per second in clean configuration and 25 degrees per second when slats are extended. The rate of roll is higher than normal law, so the aircraft can be very sensitive at first. Do be careful, my friends, because there is no bang angle protection. Okay, we have covered pitch and lateral control. Let us move on to the your alternate law. Your alternate law, the turn coordination function is lost and the pilot controls your with the rudder pedals. Only the your damping function is available. Damper authority is limited to plus minus 5 degrees of rudder deflection. Okay, so now what protections we have then? Number one, load factor limitations. It is similar to normal law, which is plus 2.5 Gs to minus 1 G for clean configuration and plus 2 Gs to 0 Gs for other configurations. Number two, we have low speed stability function. An artificial low speed stability replaces the normal angle of attack protection. It is available in all slats and flaps configuration. And it is active from about 5 knots up to about 10 knots above stall warning speed depending on the aircraft gross weight and configuration. A gentle progressive nose down signal is introduced which tends to keep the speed from falling below these values. The pilot can override this demand. And the system also introduced bank angle compensation, so the aircraft effectively maintains a constant angle of attack. The PFD speed scale is modified to show a black red barber pole below the stall warning. An audio stall warning is activated at an appropriate margin from the stall condition and the upper floor protection is inoperative. Number 3. We have the high speed stability function and above VMO and MMO, a nose up demand is introduced to avoid excessive increase in speed. The pilot can override this demand. In addition, the oral overspeed warning, which is VMO plus 4 knots or MMO plus 0.06 mark, remains available. Let's have a look at the alternate law without protections and this is identical to alternate law except 
that it does not include the low speed stability or the high speed stability. It includes only the load factor limitation. This topic is rather dry with a lot of numbers and figures, so not to worry, we are almost at the end of this topic. Next, we will have a look at direct law. And being in direct law is kind like having unprotected sex. You feel more, a little more sensitive, but boy, you are entering a danger zone here. Alright, direct law, the PFD displays message, use man pitch trim. This message flashes for 5 seconds and then becomes steady. The ECAM displays flight control direct law, protection loss. Use small control inputs when the aircraft is in direct law as controls are light and powerful. Guys, at this point, the controls are sensitive. Some pointers here, good trimming and pitch is required. Avoid large changes in thrust or sudden speed brake movements and landing in direct law is like landing a conventional aircraft. As usual, we look into pitch, lateral, and yaw, the three axes. The pitch direct law is direct stick to elevator relationship. Elevator deflection is proportional to side stick movement. The maximum elevator deflection varies with the aircraft CG. It is a compromise between adequate controllability with the forward CG and not too sensitive control with an aft CG, just like a compromise between a husband and wife. There is no automatic trim, so you, the pilot, must trim manually. There is no pitch attitude protection, so overspeed and stall warning are available, which is same as alternate law. No protections are operative and the alpha floor function is out as well. Next, we will look at lateral control. When the aircraft is flying in pitch alternate law, lateral control follows roll direct law. It is a direct stick to control surface movement relationship using ailerons and spoilers 4 and 5. Special note, if the spoilers number 4 has failed, spoiler number 3 replaces it and if the ailerons have failed, all spoilers becomes active. Roll rate is automatically limited to about 30 degrees per second in clean configuration and 25 degrees per second when slats are extended. The rate of roll is higher than normal low and the aircraft appears to be very sensitive at first. There is no bank angle protection. Does this sound familiar? Surprise! Yes, you are right. Lateral control in direct law is the same as alternate law. Lastly, let us look at your mechanical control. The pilot controls yaw using the rudder pedals and the yaw damping and turn coordination functions are lost. And there you have it, short and sweet message on direct law. Finally, we are at the last end of this series, the last mile, the last run, mechanical backup. Mechanical backup enables the pilot to control the aircraft during a temporary complete loss of electrical power and therefore loss of all computers. Guys, this is a very very rare occurrence but it is good to know. The PFD displays man pitch trim only in red. The pilot edges the pitch by manually applying trim to the THS and the pilot uses the rudder pedals as the mechanical backup to laterally control the aircraft. This degraded mode is designed to enable the pilots to control the aircraft until the restoration of the other flight system occurs. So only the rudder and the THS controls are available. However, the pilot does have the use of thrust. Increased thrust gives no sub pitch and decreased thrust gives nose down pitch and is quicker acting than trimming the aircraft itself. And caution, differential thrust will give yaw and is definitely not recommended. Very very hard to fly in this state so good luck. I have not heard stories about pilots being in mechanical backup stage but if you have, do comment on the section below and let us discuss. That's it for this video. Do comment, subscribe and like this video and I will see you in the next video. Also, if you have any videos that you like to see, do comment in the section below.